This brass colored assuming lock doesn't have any branding on it. It's got a thumb turn, but there's no other markings on here. It's just literally a, a plain brass colored cylinder. Uh, it came off a job and uh, I don't have a key for it, but I have been trying to open this and it keeps um, eluding the open. Uh, but there appears to be plenty of spool pins inside this lock that's making it really hard to pick. So let's just have another go at this. It's pin one. Two. Three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, we've got a little bit of rotation on the core now, a little bit of a full set down on there. Not a massive one, but it's encouraging that it's starting to. Uh, React to being picked. Okay, they've got an even deeper full set now off pin one. So we're now definitely in spool territory. There's a spool there on pin three with the given me counter rotation. See if we can set that. Okay, that's now set and we've got an even deeper full set. Pin four. Pin four is solid. Let's skip that one for now. Pin five. Give me counter rotation. Yep. See if we can set that. Okay, that's that set. That's two small pins that we've uh, defeated. Go to the back of the lock. Pin six. Not giving me anything at the moment. I can hear my dog snoring in the background. Uh, let's just. Okay. Let's go back to the front of the lock, see where we're at. One, pin two is high, let's set pin two. One, two, three, four, five, six. As you can see, something keeps holding me up in this lock. And, uh, and I can't identify what it is. Now I've got the pick trapped. How do we get that out of there? Let's back the tension off a little bit. There we go. So still got the full set. Let's try a different pick. Let's go for a medium hook. Okay, so I've just touched pin one jumped into a full set. Pin two is still high, very high in fact. Let's just pop pin two down. Okay, that's solid. There's a bit of rotation on three. That's set. And now we've got a full, uh, deeper full set. Four is solid. Having difficulty navigating through this warding. Five was a spool. That's now set. Lost the full set. And pin six. Five. 
feels set. Okay, let's get back to the front. And woohoo, it's open. Whew. This has been defeating me for about 25 minutes now. So uh, I'm absolutely intrigued to uh, see what's inside this and uh, whether there's anything special that's been uh, causing the uh, issues. So let's take a look inside. Right, well, this is the lock I've just picked. So uh, let's do a gutting on this one. Stick that pin and shoe in there. Keep everything in place. Uh, we've got the dreaded clip on the side. I've just noticed there's a K and a C on the side of this uh, cylinder. I'm not sure what that designates and uh, whether it's a clue as to what make it is. It's not, a, not something I'm um, aware of. So let's get this clip off. They're never easy. I never find these clips easy. There we go. I've absolutely mullered that one, but uh, objective achieved. Okay, let's get the core out. There we go. There's quite a bit of drill protection in there, actually. Uh, six pin. There's an, uh, let's zoom in for you. An anti-drill pin at the front, two anti-drill pins here to the back of the uh, of the cylinder. Um, let's tip the key pins out. Hopefully without too much carnage. So that one is uh, steel. In fact, they all look like they're made out of uh, steel and they've all got little lines on actually they've all got little ledges which is quite interesting that obviously is going to prevent them from falling too far down inside the uh, inside the um, core so there we go there's six that's an anti-drill pin uh, so there we got six quite unusual looking key pins um, if I just feel inside these pin chambers every single one of them has got a little ledge in there which obviously these uh, key pins the ledges on these key pins are going to be sitting in there so no other shenanigans going on with this I don't think Right, let's have a look at the, the main event. Let's see what we've got inside the uh, inside the actual cylinder. Let's tip that out. There we go. This is the um, the front loader from uh, UK Lock Pickers. Let's take that out. Pair of tweezers. Right, let's see what funniness we've got going on inside here. It might give me some clue why this was uh, proven to be a little tricky to pick. Okay, pin one is a spool. Pin two is another spool. In fact, pin one was a double spool. Pin two is a single. Let's get that spring out of the way. Go on spring. Oh, that's pin key um, driver pin three driver pin four five and the last one well, there you go. That might explain, that might go some way to explaining why this innocent looking lock was a little tricky to pick. Um, all the springs are 
looks pretty much standard springs. But uh, right, I'm going to uh, arrange these, uh, zoom in so we can have a closer look. Right, I've finished the gutting. Um, this week appears to have been a week of uh, surprise locks. And this one is making uh, no difference to that. We've got this um, very plain, unassuming looking um, Euro cylinder. There's no markings on the face. Uh, the the um, core is hasn't does have it doesn't have any markings either. Um, and written on the side of this are the letters K and C. So I'm not sure what K and C um, signify. But uh, anyway, the um, things to note about this, there's lots of drill protection. So we've got three anti-drill pins in the actual uh, cylinder body itself. Um, there isn't anything going on down inside here. The, all, the, all the pin chambers appear to be just a, a straight drilling without any um, anything going on there. Um, I have noticed in the center of this lock body, it's been cut. There's actually, a, this is not joined anymore. I can't tell whether that's a factory, um, that, whether that was actually done at the factory or whether that's uh, something that's happened since. <clears throat> but what I do know is what the door I took this out of, they were complaining that the lock um, wasn't working um, very well and uh and obviously this with the uh with the the cut down the middle there allows this euro to flex and uh and it was quite tight it was in a in a hop um, sorry a hoopley lock so um and uh it was obviously flexed and the cam was misaligned so uh so anyway um on the actual uh core itself again you've got three anti-drill pins on there that uh, mirror the anti-drill pins on the cylinder itself and each of these uh, pin chambers has got a little lip just at the top a little sharp edge which is obviously going to catch the uh, the key pins and also when the spools catch on there the spool pins catch on there, then they're going to um, take a little bit more persuasion to set. Now, while we're talking about uh, key pins, every single one of these key pins, let's just zoom in on those, every single one of these key pins has got a little uh, ledge on it. And the interesting thing about that is the ledges are not all in the same place. And if you look inside, well, when I look inside this uh, uh, core, the ledges are mirrored inside. So each of these pin chambers has been drilled, key pin chambers have been drilled so far and left a little ledge in there. And so when these pins go in, obviously they, they go down as far as they can and then they stop on the ledge, the ledge that's on the pin and the ledge that's inside the actual uh, in, inside the actual core. So I've seen this before on on what I would call an anti bump pin because a little ledge holds the pin higher, and then the rest of the key pins drop down. But every single one of these key pins has got a little ledge on it. And the interesting thing is, if we put these two side by side, I'm not sure whether you can see that, but the ledge is in different places. Um, so the shorter stubby pins have a, a quite a high ledge on them and then the longer pins have this uh, well let's do it the other way around actually because that's the bottom of the key pin there so this has a um, a low ledge so it's, it's not sticking into the keyway anywhere near as much as this one which has obviously got this um, ledge much higher up on that key pin so the key pins inside the lock will be effectively um, sawtooth up down up down um, and that's certainly going to uh, cause a problem with a bump key 
where everything's cut to the same height because it will miss these stubby pins and it will interface heavily with those with the uh, with these longer pins of which there's three there's three of each in there so they are an anti-bump feature for sure um, and then inside the driver pins we've got uh, three double spools and we've got uh, three single spools and they're all fantastic i mean the they really are very very um narrow dumbbell shaped and uh yeah of course while you're picking these are going to be causing all sorts of mayhem on the uh, on the ledge that's inside this uh inside this core so all in all there's quite a lot of surprises in there and, and all of this is made of um, steel so all of them are going to be uh, an anti uh, drill feature i would i would hate to drill this lock in fact i probably wouldn't even want to use a, a magi burr on it because every time it came across one of these and it freed up in in the keyway it would probably snap your magi burr time and time again so really attacking this lock with a drill or a burr is is going to be a real pain um in the back of the uh in the back of the uh um core is this little plunger and the little plunger again has a spring behind it and the pin which is which is uh, controlling the authority on the cam inside the lock but also you'll notice that the little uh, cut out here where the key pin or where the end of the key uh, would normally interface um, that's obviously protected so again there's no um, uh, bypass uh, thumb turn bypass wire won't work on this lock so all in all there's um, quite a package of, uh, of protection inside this lock so for something that looks um, very unassuming and uh, uh, just a simple pick turn out to be a little bit of a nightmare pick and uh, and it's got some really interesting contents in there oh well there we go um i thought i'd share that with you hope you enjoy this video and uh, i'll see you on the next one bye for now